All right, welcome to this week's walk and talk. And don't ask me what has just happened. It was beautiful, sunny, and I start walking and this, this fog, this sea fog just rolls in. So yeah, uh, not sure what happened there, but we've got a lot to talk about today. A lot of crazy, crazy stuff. The crazy just keeps getting worse and worse every single week. We're gonna talk about the highest levels of UK homelessness on record, the new BRICS currency. We've got, in fact, we've got so much to talk about. I've got about 20 articles. I'll probably summarize it down to about a dozen. So let's get started then. Let's get started with the BRICS to accelerate now the launch of their own currency. And the US is not happy. And uh, you look at all the justifications. I was listening to the meeting and listening to what they were saying. And they're basically saying, not that I think this is true, <laughs> right? But they're saying, oh, we're so concerned that the US dollar is going to collapse very soon that we're just getting this BRICS currency in place just in case. And it's like, mm, yeah, of course you are, ladies and gentlemen. Of course you are doing that. And by the way, people said, Neil, you seem a lot more happy and animated now. What's changed? It's because I've moved onto a lot of other video platforms and I can actually be quite self-expressed and speak my mind on a lot of topics now. Whereas before I had to, every other word, I had to just keep second guessing myself so that I don't get banned and demonetized again. You know, when you get demonetized on an almost weekly basis, you, you just get completely demotivated to actually go out and do this sort of stuff. So I'm very happy we're on different platforms. Feel free to watch wherever you want. There's, I'm on different platforms now. Feel free to choose the one you think is best for you, whether that's YouTube, whether it's Rumble or X or Facebook or, you know, whatever, you know, your choice. But I just would say thank you for supporting me on the on the Patreon as well. And, and, and actually it's not just support, there's loads and loads of great content on there. So you can get access to that. Okay, so this BRICS currency then, they've announced now that they're gonna launch this stable coin. And again, there's still a lot going on behind the scenes. We're not 100% certain on what the, the amount of gold that all these nations have been buying up and storing, how much that will come into play. Is it going to be the BRICS currency will be a central bank digital currency? Will it be one BRICS currency? Will it be a basket of their currencies, which is backed by gold? We're still not 100% sure, but what we do know is that this is coming and this is going to change the new world order on a grand scale when this hits. I was just thinking as I was driving here in the sunshine before the fog rolled in, I was just thinking, hmm, I need to really think out the future for me. And I also wanted to share this with all of you. You really got to think about the future with the speed, the absolute speed all of this is moving with these developing countries moving towards this new currency. They're moving towards more cooperation. You see a massive growth in these countries. And then you look at the West and I'm very, very worried about what's happening in the West and our currencies, which are just getting worse by the day. The debt levels are getting worse by the day. The politics are getting worse. The freedom of speech is getting worse. So yeah, as I've said in a couple of videos lately, really, really think about your plan B. You don't wanna get caught out when all of this happens. I was speaking to someone recently who is from the Ukraine region. And he was talking about how he was very lucky to get out before they basically closed all the borders. And he said, you know, let everyone know on your channel, this is a warning for everyone because once the borders close, if there's conscription and other things, that's it, it's, it's pretty much game over. You haven't got a, you haven't got a choice. But I digress, what, what did the Russian Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs say? He led a discussion on stable coins. He said these will serve as the monetary bridge among BRICS nations, and it will help to reduce the dominance of the dollar and the euro, and it will pr promote financial independence for our nations. Yeah, the US is not gonna be happy with this. And I don't mean the people of the US, I mean 
the people who are in charge of the US, which is not Biden, by the way, if you haven't figured that out by now. In fact, got a little story about Biden at the end and what he's just been told by his advisors that he has to do in future. This one made me laugh. Oh, look at this view behind. Isn't that beautiful? Hold on, let me get out of the way. Take a look at this. Isn't that stunning? If you ever come to the Isle of Man, this is called St. Michael's Isle, by the way, just in case you, you keep in notes of where I do my walks, if you ever want to come out here. All right. What else did he say? He wants to get away from the US debt collapse and he wants to support all of the nations in the BRICS alliance. There's going to be more joining the alliance next year. This, this is getting bigger and bigger. I know people laughed at me when I said years ago, that, well, this happens all the time. People always laugh and criticize, but hey, that is, that is life. When you're a public person, I guess, and you put videos out, I've got to get used to the criticism that comes daily, <laughs> right? But what did I say? You're going to see loads of more countries joining BRICS. People said, no, no, they won't because they're afraid of what Europe and the US and all these other nations will do to them. I said, I just don't, I don't think so. When you get all these alliances together and all the countries agree together, there's always a tipping point. And I think we've, we've passed that tipping point now. We're over, the, we're over the tipping point and we're seeing all these countries signing up and applying for BRICS membership. And I think this is going to get even more, uh, more countries joining up for this. I really do. I think this is going to ramp up. Now, on the opposite point here, just had an article coming out. There was this big assessment done on banks. 7% of US banks are at risk of failure. And they're blaming it on inflationary pressure for banks. They're also talking about the commercial real estate loans that are all coming due. And they think this will collapse a number of banks. And this is no surprise to me. I think, I think we've talked about this a lot. That I do think we're going to see a lot more bank failures. I really do that we've already seen the first one of 2024. We saw a number last year. I, I just, I think this is the tip of the iceberg. Whether they'll all come to fruition this year, I can't say, I, I, I don't know. But I do think that there's so much vulnerability in the banking sector, in the US particularly, because of all this commercial real estate loans and this era of low interest rates which were unsustainable. Sure, they think they're going to continue it. They're going to drop these rates. I think you're going to get surprises, ladies and gents. I've said for a year now that I don't think you're going to see these massive drops like all the analysts are saying. So people are basing all their financial and investment decisions and mortgages and all this sort of stuff on these drops. I just don't, I'm just not convinced we're going to see the amount that they think that we're going to see. And I just got this chart for you. I've pulled it up. Let me put it on screen here. And what it shows is a significant reduction in US small bank cash reserves. So it's dropped by 258 billion with a B. This is not million with an M. It's fallen well below safe levels. And this is the largest decrease since April 2022. So what we're seeing is people are moving all of the money which again, it was only two weeks ago, we talked about this exact point that I said would happen. We're seeing people moving the money now from these smaller banks to the larger banks because the, bank, the larger banks are too big to fail. Do I like this? No, I really dislike the big banks. I like the smaller local regional banks, even though you might find that strange for me to say that I like some of these banks. I actually do, the small local regional community banks. They're often run by very good people and they're just trying to offer a good service to society and communities. The big banks, is not that, that's not it at all. All they care about is profit. We mentioned it on yesterday's video, fiduciary responsibility. That is what it is. It's their responsibilities to profit and shareholders. That's why they're destroying all the banks. That's why they're destroying and eating up other banks, closing branches, laying off staff, ramping up AI and doing all of these other things because they, they care about profit. It's all about profit. It's not about service. It's not about looking after you. And it's definitely not about caring for your money and making sure that your money is safe. That's in their mind, the FDIC's job and the, uh, 
financial compensation scheme in the UK's job as well. And then there's different ones for each country. Look how clear the water is here. It is just crystal clear. Now I wanted to do a quick update with this image and I'm gonna put it on screen here. So this is the US banks with the most commercial real estate exposure. And you can see here, I mean, the, the exposure levels is very, very scary indeed. Bank OZK has got the highest by far, 32 billion. And then it works its way down. I'll leave the image on screen for a second. You can just see if your bank is on screen here, because if it is, be very careful. You may need to take some measures to protect yourself because when this real estate comes up for renewal, good luck because I just don't see how these banks are gonna manage it. And the FDIC hasn't got the money in the account to do it. It would mean more currency creation, bailing them out, which is only gonna add into inflation, which potentially could push up the stock market further and house prices further as well. So. You know, it depends. You might sit on either side of there. There's always a silver lining, I guess, some people might say to that comment. Over to Florida then, and Ron DeSantis has just signed a new bill into law, SB 1084, which prohibits the manufacturing, sale, and distribution of lab-grown meat. Yes, in Florida. And this is to protect the state's cattle industry and ensure food safety. It's just amazing to me now that, that we've been, again, in the comments here, you've been sharing, we've been talking about this for three or four years, all this lab-grown meat, and we're saying, this is not healthy. How can this stuff be healthy? And how can they have all of these 40 or 50 ingredients in some of this stuff? How can that be healthy? Surely, surely this cannot be, be uh, good for us to eat this sort of stuff. So it says the legislation which reflects a broader stance against the World Economic Forum's advocacy for alternative protein sources uh, like lab-grown meat and insects was enacted amid concerns over the authenticity, safety, and environmental impact of bioengineered foods. Guys, do, do me a favor. If you are eating this stuff, please stop. You know what? Just to share a testimony with you here, I used to have a number of health issues, as, as I think many of you know, because I used to talk about them. And I'm the sort of person, I listen to other people. I, I don't think that I, you know, I know it all or that uh, my knowledge is superior or anything like that. There's some things I know a lot about because I do a ton of research. There's other things I don't know about. And that's when I say to you, hey, I'm having this difficulty. Please drop in the comments below if you have experience with this, right? I've been doing this for years. Well, I had a few health issues in the past, which I've talked about. And people said to me, hey, Neil, you need to go back to, like I used to drink soy milk a lot. People would be like, yeah, soy boy, etc." And they'd say, you know, stop drinking soy milk, go back to real milk and um, stop eating this and, and start eating beef and all these other things. And I can honestly, hand on heart, tell you that since I've gone back to normal products and I just got rid of everything out of my kitchen and house that wasn't um, natural in the most part, I would say, my health has been almost 100%. I'm not joking, almost 100% in all areas, all the health issues I had before have just gone away. I'm pretty sure, almost 100% sure, it was from the food. I think whatever all these chemicals that they were putting in have, were making me sick. And now all of these issues have gone. So just a little testimony there for you. If you're having any health things and the doctors sometimes you know they, they give a load of nonsense or they try and give you some sort of pills or, or whatever right try just having a more natural diet like i did again i'm not a, a health expert i'm not a food expert right you, you need to follow people that, that know about all this stuff like i did this has completely changed my health okay moving on to the next thing then this is a big one uk homelessness has just jumped 16 percent. I honestly could not believe this when I uh, read the statistics. Nearly 45,000 households have just been assessed as homeless. This is unbelievable. 45,000. The increase on 2022-2023 is 
staggering. And it says that a lot of these, the, the numbers include children. And it says these children are under dire condition. By the way, this is mainstream media. This isn't alternative media. This is mainstream media. They've got all these examples of children in, in temporary accommodation, really bad, filthy accommodation. Sometimes the kids are skipping meals. The families are skipping meals. Now, there's obviously a lot of controversy, which, you know, I will cover on this, even though people often don't like it. But there's a lot of controversy and, and these people are being silenced and they're saying the reason the increase has been so severe is because they're saying that a number of asylum seekers who are coming over and again not all of them are asylum seekers remember some of them are illegal migrants coming over well there's a lot of talk about priority i mean again i, I can't tell you this for a fact but there's a lot of talk about priority of different councils giving priority to certain groups over others. So logically and just applying common sense, that would make sense, but I really need to read into that data and find the studies on this because they don't really want to release this sort of stuff. And then that might explain what is actually going on here. But I was disappointed by one of the stories that I saw yesterday and it, it was talking about all the um, homelessness. Let's get back off the rocks here. And it was, was it focusing on, say, UK citizens? Nope. Was it focusing on UK kids? Nope. It was all about the shocking conditions of people uh, coming in seeking asylum. It was basically saying all the people coming in off the boats. It was saying they're under, you know, they're having to live in these terrible conditions in hotels. And I'm like, why are you not even addressing this massive increase in UK citizens that are now homeless so they have no no home why why is the media focusing why is it not focusing on that you know it's because it's so corrupt now another thing they are not focusing on is the shoplifting the theft rate in the uk it is uh, the numbers the percentages statistics on this even i when i saw it i said no, no they've got this wrong I had to go over all the statistics for myself because I said, someone's just writing a, you know, a very overblown article here or whatever. But no, the, the, the figures, I've done them myself, is correct. London especially has received an increase of 5-0% in the last 12 months. It's up 50% theft and shoplifting in London alone in the last 12 months and that's all they're releasing so all the stuff they used to include in these reports they are not including anymore hmm i wonder why they don't want us to know a lot of this stuff going on now a lot of this will be organized crime and gangs and i've said this for a long time a lot of it will be organized crime organized gangs and we're seeing this happening on a mass scale and the police don't often investigate this sort of stuff in fact the british retail consortium oh no this one's from the british independent retails association byra they've expressed significant concern over the figures they say the safety and well-being of shop staff is under direct threat they're saying that there's a lot of problems. The police aren't even coming out, especially when some of the shoplifters become violent or, or staff are attacked. Says that police are not investigating this. This is pretty sad to, to see the state of affairs. It really is, really is sad. Oh, by the way, yesterday's video, I'm surprised none of you noticed this <laughs> or, or said a comment on it. But if you look at the title of yesterday's video, I completely forgot to mention the whole point of the video. I went off on a wild goose chase talking about all sorts of things, but I forgot the most important thing. And it was the UK's proposed uh, mass bank spying powers. How on earth, I forgot to mention it, I don't know. But it's basically the banks now under the Data Protection and Digital Information Bill are going to monitor all customer accounts to detect fraud this includes tracking individuals movements yes opinions and their medical data and the banks will be required to report this to the government can you believe that i mean can you well, two, two things can you believe i forgot to mention that first first and foremost but can you believe this is happening in the united kingdom what is going on 
Ladies and gents, drop a comment. What is going on now? Are we, are we living in the twilight zone? This is the UK. It is going downhill and it's going down fast. This is worrying. And you see some of these interviews. I don't like watching TV. I mean, I hate watching TV, actually. I'll, let's be honest. But I watch some of these interviews on X or wherever else. And some of these people, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. They, they've, been, they've been brainwashed. And they say things like, oh, well, if, if you've got nothing to hide, well, it doesn't matter. So what if the government wants to spy and they want to track all your stuff and they want to know what your opinions are? Well, if your opinions are extremist and then they start giving examples of conservatives. <laughs> what? Oh, gosh. By the way, people always say, Neil, are you uh, Labour? Are you conservative? Are you? I'm none of them. I, I, I don't get involved in any politics. I think it's all just a big game. I don't get involved in any of it. <laughs> so there's the answer for those of you who always ask or leave a comment thinking I'm a conservative or uh, that's British conservative, which is different to US conservative, by the way. I don't get involved in any of it. Just try and keep myself more libertarian in, in my views. Um, okay, the fog is starting to clear now. The sea fog, it's starting to clear. And talking of all of this, uh, you know, tracking and monitoring and everything else, the UK e-passport gates all had a malfunction yesterday. Yes, there were thousands of people, it says tens of thousands. You've got to look at some of the videos. People just got stuck. These e-passport gates just had black screens. So you, you, couldn't, you couldn't do anything. And of course, because they've gotten rid of loads of border staff, instead of having these AI and machines and everything else, people, they didn't have enough staff to process a number of people. So the backlog of people was huge. So this is a warning for everybody. When all this stuff goes digital, learn from these experience. I'm learning from every one of these little experiences. When everything goes digital, <laughs> it's gonna be, it is gonna be Mad Max. It's gonna be absolutely nuts when all of this comes through. We've just had this new uh, proposal as well. It's still going through. A lot of people are analyzing it. I haven't gone through it in detail yet, but I just want to read some of the initial things that have come out of the Biden's uh, tax plan. So it's this, this new tax plan talking about taxing unrealized assets or unsold assets. And it's really, if you look at the proposal, it doesn't affect most people. I doubt it affects anyone watching here. You've got to have a hundred million dollars of assets basically. But why I think this is going to, it won't affect any of us because none of us have got a hundred million dollars of, of assets, right? But it, it will affect us inadvertently or it will affect Americans inadvertently because if he's going to tax people, it's something like a 25% tax uh, to, to raise funds and it's all you know, it's all linked to all sorts of conflicts and, and everything else. You know what some of these people are going to do? They're going to take their money and their investments. They're going to sell them or they're going to move their funds elsewhere to another country. Because remember, the economy is not simple. It's very, very complex. So I, we've got to watch this. I'm going to watch this very, very closely. They want to get it through before November. I wonder why they're trying to push through loads of stuff at the minute in the US before November, because I think we know where this is going. All right, I don't wanna make this video too long, keep it, keep it a little bit shorter. So let's finish with the last one and I'll talk about some of the other stuff next week now. Biden, <laughs> Biden, I said at the beginning we'd, we'd mention this. So what is, what is uh, Biden's team, his advisors said, they said they wanna keep his speeches short and succinct now and all of the questions and everything else. They want to keep them really short and succinct. I wonder why there were accusations of him having difficulty speaking publicly, speaking at length, lots of errors, awkward incidents, falling over, all this. And his team have hit back and said, this is absolutely not true, and that he's an eloquent speaker and that they just think it's best that they focus on quality <laughs> over quantity. <laughs> uh, but some of the comments on social media had me almost falling over with laughter today at these new speeches. All right, well, we're coming into the close 
now then we've got this beautiful old church behind in fact let's let me walk over here a second and show you this church take a look at that isn't that beautiful here we go it's a chapel ruins of the 11th century but all right thanks for being online today really appreciate it take care god bless i'll see you next week